Greetings travellers, it's UK here again. Today talking about uh, another role playing game that I've played called Rune Quest. Rune Quest um, is published, I believe, still by Chaosium, the same people that do Call of Cthulhu. Um, I believe it was originally published in like the late 70s or very early 80s. I'm sure it was late 70s. Um, and it was introduced to me by my friend Chris when we were at school. And over the course of one summer, we played a very short, very odd little campaign. Um, he had the hardback version of the rules that was published by Games Workshop um, in the late 80s, uh, presumably to bring the game to a more UK market. It uses essentially the same system that Call of Cthulhu uses. So I think the stats are the same. Um, obviously the skills are of the same system, but obviously they're different to compensate for the fact that this is a fantasy game rather than a contemporary style game. And while humans were the default race, there were options for dwarves, elves, ogres, you name it. Including my favourite, a race of humanoid ducks. Used to like playing them. Um, stats, as I recall then, were rolled. Um, same as called Cthulhu, they were either like 3d6 or 2d6 plus 6, or whatever, based on what of the, which of the races you took. And... That's where it sort of differs a little bit from Call of Cthulhu. Because you have, instead of having like a profession and these are your skills, you kind of had to determine your background. Um, and that would determine what sort of class you could be, or profession, I should say, not class, you could be. And that gave you certain points in your skills. And unlike Call of Cthulhu, where the game uses a modern approach to say right everybody has like a 25 percent in library use or uh this your skills in runequest started off really really small you instead of getting like that many points you'd end up like maybe you have five and you might get an extra one from something or you really had to do something to specialize to get a few more points um and ultimately it sort of leads to a game that has a more not the right choice of words, but had a more realistic sort of bent to it, as opposed to D&D, &D, which is more demigod, superhero almost. Um, you are, it's essentially taking the concept of like a real world historical sort of character and playing that, which I can see not always fitting with a lot of uh, uh, gaming preferences. It's not something I, quite, I particularly enjoy. Um... And the setting, the default setting, is called Glorantha. And um, it's un unlike, I say, other fantasy games where you have a medieval setting. RuneQuest is very firmly based in kind of like a Bronze Age, I guess is the right era for it. Um, you're looking at um, cultures that are very Roman Empire-esque or Picked slash Celts or Babylonian or something like that. You know, uh, we're looking old worldy, but not too ancient old worldy. Um, and it doesn't always gel. I think when Games Workshop did their version of it, they did they that that was still there, but you could at least get a sense that they were trying to bring it more. Um, Contemporary, not contemporary, to a more medieval in appearance and in style. So it's not necessarily a setting that appeals to everybody, and I don't necessarily think it's a game, uh, a game system that can appeal to everybody. Um, as I've said in other vids, often we play role playing games because we want to be bigger and better than we actually are in the real world, and um, the RuneQuest system doesn't quite allow you to do that even the magic system isn't strong um in the same sense that we'd see from D, &D or similar games um you have like spirit magic and something else and you have percentages uh, percentage skill 
chance to get things to work and so on. Um, it's not a bad little game. And the campaign that my friend Chris ran for us over the summer, um, in the back of the rule book, there are a set of tables for wandering encounters. And it's kind of started off with a civilised table. And if you rolled on it and you're really high, it would jump to a... Um, through a series of other tables until you got to like you know barren wasteland sort of thing and he had this campaign where um we were hired guards on a mercenary and a, a merchant caravan sorry um i remember i played an ogre in that one who we were just like big dumb humans really rather than the sort of traditional ogre we see in other games um and all it was was essentially free-forming, uh, rolling to see what we encountered and then making a encounter out of that and seeing where we ran with it. I did something similar about 12 years ago. I played in a campaign run by two guys who um, had set up this uh, campaign idea where, again, we were hired on uh, on a mercenary caravan, but we had like a, a seasonal route so you left this city and you went up and round through the various town settlements and you came back in time for winter. But the way they'd done it is that they'd split half of it to be run by one GM and they'd split the other half by the other guy. And whoever wasn't running on that particular bit played in the game. And um, that was quite interesting. But again, um, they were... Uh, historical war gamers so they had lots of like little little figures um, which were used for combat and unfortunately RuneQuest never struck me as a game that worked with miniatures very well um, but there you go uh, unfortunately the campaign never finished uh, due to the fact that one of the guys had to move away from the area um, but it was fun while it lasted um, so for me RuneQuest is an odd game I, I think it's got a very specific target audience that doesn't probably um, mesh too much with um, the more traditional fantasy role players. Um, it's a bit difficult to explain that, really. I, I think you've got to like the sort of system that RuneQuest uses. And you've kind of got to like the setting that it uses. It's not a bad little game, and somewhere I do have, not here, but um, somewhere about the house, I do have um, a box set of the rules, which I bought in the mid-00s or early 00s. Um, I'll probably never run it again, um, but I do remember using it as a source of inspiration for other games. Um, but... There we go. Um, that's my discussion on RuneQuest. Um, have you played it? What, were you, what did you think of it? Was it your cup of tea? Um, and uh, put your comments down below and we'll try and get a discussion going. Thanks for watching. Take care, guys, and good gaming.